Hi, in the last video we put together this kit, this DSO-138 uh, mini oscilloscope kit and unfortunately we could get it to power up but we couldn't get a trace on it so we were back to the drawing board to figure out why this was happening. Now since then I have got it working, sorry this was supposed to be a diagnosis video but it turned out to be so simple that there really wasn't a point in uh, making a video uh, just to show that repair but I will go through what the uh, repair involved and uh, what was the uh, problem. Now since then I have crudely got it in this uh, 3D printed case, I've only got one screw that's of the wrong size uh, temporarily holding it together. I uh, have ordered new screws that should be the uh, correct size for this case. This case can be found on Thingiverse, it's not my design, links to the original designer are in the description below. You can get various different cases for this that have been designed, some that will hold batteries behind, some that don't, different types of batteries. I haven't made my mind up yet as to how I want this to be powered for portability. Uh, 9 volts can be used but it does have its uh, downsides as we will see. So I haven't fully decided yet so I just went with this one for now because I could always glue some batteries behind here if need be. So let's pop this uh, one screw out and uh, that way we can uh, just have a look at the board and we can verify that it is working. So we will put that to the side. So here's our board as we had last time and uh, nothing has changed particularly apart from the repair that was made to uh, get this working. Now if you want a board like this that works and you uh, don't have to spend hours debugging it then why not check out PCB Way? You can get your boards fully assembled from them and tested and shipped to you or your customers in a fully working condition. With PCB Way, you can get high quality PCBs from just $5 for 10 boards. Why not add assembly starting from just $30 for 1 to 20 boards? PCB Way offer a high quality and professional manufacturing service from prototype to fully assembled boards, flex PCBs, and more. Check them out in the link below. So when it came to doing a bit of uh, troubleshooting on this, um, as I previously said in the other video, I thought it best just to check voltages. And for the most part, uh, a lot of the test points were reading correctly. Uh, but V1 down here was supposed to read zero volts and it wasn't. It was reading about 1.3, 1.2, 1 1.3 volts. So I thought from the get go, okay, that's not right. That should be zero. Uh, let's have a look into that. So I had a brief look over the board and I couldn't see anything obvious. The solder joints looked fairly okay. Uh, didn't check under a microscope or anything, but did just sort of have a general overview and uh, it wasn't anything too obvious. So I had a quick look on Google and then you start getting into the realm of, oh, you might need to change this or change that, or oh, that's not correct, this is not correct. Uh, but luckily, when looking at uh, issues with voltage, there was reference to uh, one of the chips on the uh, board. So let's see if we can get this screen off and uh, just show you which chip we mean. Okay, so I've taken the uh, screen off so we can get a better view. So the IC in question is actually this IC here. Now, if you remember um, when we uh, put this together, I wasn't too happy about the soldering quality on that, but thought probably it looked okay-ish and uh, it should do the job. So this is the one that's marked TL084 and is an ST Micro M29 I believe that says. So looking online, there were references to this chip um, possibly not being soldered correctly. And yes, that was the case. Um, I think it was literally just one pin on this side. Uh, it's still not perfect, but just one pin. But I just went through and uh, touched up all of these pins and uh, then rechecked for voltages and the voltage was zero as it should be on test point V1. So if we plug the uh, screen back in and uh, we we'll connect up the power. Again, this is just nine volts from the uh, power supply. And you can see it booting up there. And you can see there we are, we've actually got a uh, trace there in the middle. I've currently just got it hooked up to the uh, uh, square wave output of the Rigel 
and uh, we'll just hook that up there and as you can see we do indeed have our square wave now things are not perfect I have already been through and uh, done some calibration with the pots just to try and clean up things a little bit but it is uh, this don't you know expect this to compete with uh, a decent uh, oscilloscope it's uh, meant for fun it will uh, get the job done for some things uh, one of the reasons I thought it could be quite useful is if there's any issues with a car that require an oscilloscope rather than drag the Rigel out and uh, get that damaged um, and you know I'm not <laughs> I don't repair cars for a living so I don't need to go out and buy a uh, super expensive automotive oscilloscope but if I did have a problem and I wanted to verify a sensor this could certainly uh, do the job good enough now so regarding actually powering it let's say there's lots of options you could use multiple uh, AA cells uh, you could probably be well, you could certainly uh, use some lithium batteries and a uh, little charge controller for it or you could use uh, sort of a 9 volt uh, battery so if we just unplug that and what I've got here is just a uh, 9 volt uh, lead onto a um, little 2 pin connector that can plug into the 9 volt there so if we just uh, connect this up just make sure your polarity is correct positive is over there and we'll connect this up to our 9 volt battery and everything should be fine this is a brand new battery and we shouldn't see any issues at all there we are traces up and that looks absolutely fine now the problems you have with 9 volt batteries is the capacity um, I think you're going to get this with all batteries but this way lithium would certainly be better than using any kind of regular uh, 9 volts or a load of AA batteries on this. Uh, so the power draw is about 100 milliamps um, sitting there doing sort of bringing up a trace um, doing not much seems to be similar around power consumption and so this will drain your battery quite quickly. Now the uh, problem that occurs from that is that it does screw up the uh, trace quite a fair bit so I'll um, use the power supply to uh, simulate this for you so we have our trace up there so what we're going to do is uh, start dropping the voltage down so 8.8 8.5 8.4 down to 8 volts and nothing too bad yet down to 7.8 7.5 volts and you can probably start seeing that the uh, trace is drifting a little bit so we're uh, tinny down a bit further. There you go, 7.4 volts, and it's uh, it's dropped right down. So our signal has moved right down, and um, if we continue to drop the voltage, obviously it will uh, just cut off. 7.3, 2, 1. That's 7 volts, and we're right down the bottom there. So you do need to bear in mind that you want your supply to be well to get it where it was we're looking at seven seven point seven volts there and uh, that pretty much is in the right place so do bear that in mind if you're powering this off batteries that once the voltage on the battery gets too low uh, you are going to start seeing your signal move downwards and uh, you're going to get data that's not going to be reliable so there we are, that's just a quick uh, second video on this uh, little DSO-138 oscilloscope kit. I'm not going to do an in-depth review, there are tons of those already on YouTube. So if you want an in-depth review, have a look on YouTube and you'll find some uh, decent videos for comparison. And say this is just kind of a uh, kit build, little toy that could be useful for diagnosing things out in the field, such as a sensor on the car. Um, otherwise it's just a uh, bit of fun really to put together so at least we got it working so we uh, we now know what the problem is so if you do have a problem with yours when you put together and uh, if you don't get zero volts on V1 there and you uh, don't get a trace like me or it's all over the place do check that IC resolder it and uh, you might find that that just solves the problem if you like the video guys please do give it a thumbs up please subscribe if you haven't already done so and I will see you soon for the next one. Cheers.